The reason why brownies are the quintessential medicated edible is it's an easy recipe that you can bake from a box that's very rich in dark, fudgy cocoa. The flavors and the textures of a dense, fat-rich brownie do a really good job at masking the sometimes unwanted flavors of herbal medication. I'd like to throw a contender into the ring, Flavacol. This is the stuff that movie theaters sprinkle on popcorn to give it the movie theater popcorn flavor, and it's so incredibly concentrated in flavor that you only need a half teaspoon of it for a big bowl of popcorn. Think about it, what other food could perfume a big open space as enormous as a movie theater with an aroma that hits you all the way back at the ticket window? Another benefit is that popcorn can take a good half hour to passively eat while watching a movie, while horking down a brownie in six bites can leave you sitting around for half an hour going, okay, any second now. Medicated popcorn is such a slow munching snack that you might actually decide halfway in, hey, maybe that's actually enough for me. Here's how you make it. Measure out one dose of medicated oil. This comes down to your own personal needs, so for this on-screen example, I'll use one milliliter of this coconut oil that I dyed green. Top up the measuring vessel with plain, regular coconut oil until you have a quarter cup of total combined volume. That's two total ounces, or 60 milliliters. Make sure you stir the oils together first so you get even distribution. You don't wanna be playing Russian roulette with a bowl of popcorn where all the medication is concentrated into one single kernel. Pour that oil into to a big, heavy-bottomed, lidded pot. If you use a cheap pot made out of thin, cheap metal, it's more likely to have hot spots that burn your popcorn. Set the heat to medium-high, like seven out of 10, and drop two or three kernels in. And then, just wait. Those sacrificial kernels are in there to alert you when the oil is finally hot enough. Once you hear them pop, pour a quarter cup of kernels into the pot, sprinkle a half teaspoon of Flavacol all over them, then immediately and aggressively shake the pot back and forth so each kernel is evenly coated in oil and seasoning. Put the lid back on and keep the pot moving. Heat and steam is building up in here and eventually the kernels will start to pop. If you regard crispness as the most important factor in a good popcorn, you'll wanna crack the lid open when the popping starts. Otherwise, all that trapped steam will degrade the crunch. I don't personally vent the lid. I don't like how it opens an opportunity for popping hot oil to exit the pot. And I kind of like my popcorn on the soft side anyway. But the comments that people leave upon hearing me say that might reveal it to be a shameful, freakish trait. When the popping gets infrequent, like one or two per second, turn the heat off. The Flavacol is super salty, so you won't need to do any post-pop seasoning. Just dump the batch into a big bowl and you're done. I had zero unpopped kernels at the bottom of this batch. All that's left is a couple crumbs and a thin film of Flavacol at the bottom. That's actually why I altered the manufacturer's suggested ratio. I had to tinker with it a couple of times to scale this recipe down to just a single serving. You'll notice that this is a recipe that presumes you already have medicated oil, and that's by design. I didn't want to get into the intricacies of decarboxylation or extraction, partly because it's really complicated, and mostly because you should only be making this if you live in a state where you can just buy pre-dosed oils or machines that do all the work for you. The good news is that every few years, a couple more of those states decide to flip that switch. Maybe this is just my age and seeing the general change in sentiment take place in real time, but when pet toy companies and YouTube recipe posters can all cash in on the holiday and the trend, why the f are people still in jail for possessing a flower that grows in a ditch and gets sold via Twitter ads? That's why I put a link next to this video to give to The Last Prisoner Project. Think about it, job less. Barkley has paid to be mentioned at the end of this video, except not really, because Barkley is my own company. I started it so I could offer YouTuber merch that was a little bit more permanent and more substantial than a $30 t-shirt. Some people are wood fanatics and others are metal heads, but I've always found ceramic to be my favorite material. And I even have the pleasure of eating every meal that I make at home off of ceramic plates that I made with my own hands. Barkley presents a way for you to experience a portion of that joy. Each piece is made just a few miles away from my house by the hands of three local ceramicists. Not to spoil the surprise, but that does mean the products are significantly more expensive than mass-produced dishware. And I'll be the first one to tell you that this is no more functional than a regular old cup. We pottery goobers understand that this obsession ain't really based on logic and reason. If you're a little ceramics freak like me, check out dinnerwithbarkley.com and let me know what you think. Thank you, Barkley, for sponsoring this video and actually the entire channel.